This video is brought to you by Envato Elements. So I'm a little overdue for a haircut, but before I go and cut my hair, I wanna talk about cutting in Adobe Premiere and talking about five awesome video editing techniques that every video editor should know. Hey, what's going on internet? This is Josh Noel from Sunduck Film and welcome to our video. And if you're new to our channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button. But you guys know what the title is all about and we already said it in the intro. So let's go ahead and jump into our first technique, which is gonna talk about speed ramping. All right, so we'll talk about speed ramping and obviously in the word speed, we should be thinking about slow motion or fast motion. And this is where we can easily control the motion of a clip. So if you wanna have normal motion and then fade into a slow motion portion of the shot and then go back to normal, this is what speed ramping allows you to do. So let's say we wanna have this part of the clip in slow motion. So what we'll do here is right click our clip, go to show clip keyframes, go to the bottom, go to time revamping and click on speed. And now we'll have these lines in here. And what we're gonna do is grab the pen tool, which is right here on the left, we'll click a point, and we'll get these brackets here that we can open up like so. And then we'll click another point and we'll get another set of brackets and we'll open those up by a little bit. So essentially now we have these two markers here and all we have to do is come here to the middle between the two markers and lower down this little bar here for the motion. And now we can see that we have our normal motion of our shot and then it goes right into slow motion. And that's how you can create speed ramping and it goes right back into normal motion. So now that we know how to hone in on a very specific part of our clip of speed ramping, let's go ahead and jump into another technique that every video editor will use and that is titles. And we're gonna talk about specifically title animation. All right, so when it comes to title animation, I don't like to do animation under the motion control. I like to go to effects, go to video effects, the store, and I'm gonna grab transform. And we have all the same parameters here. And the specific reason why that I do it here is to control the motion blur of the clip. Now, let's go ahead and do so, some very simple animation here. So we'll add a keyframe for scale and we'll move it forward by a few frames here and then we'll set the scale down to zero. So now the title will just scale in from nothing and that's cool. Then we'll come here to the end or so and we'll add a keyframe for position and we'll move it forward and we'll just bring it down for demonstration here. And just to preview our animation, you can see that the title just goes straight down. And to me, this is very boring and digital-like. What we need to do here is uncheck Use Composition Shutter Angle and set the shutter angle to 180. And now we'll get a little bit of motion blur with our titles. And just to show you what that looks like, uh, you can see there's motion blur on the title right here. And if I check back on Use Composition Shutter Angle, there's no motion blur to the you know animation. And that is very important. And then also, technique what we can do is grab all of our keyframes right click them go to temporal interpolation I think I just butchered that but click on Bezier and it'll just give it a very nice smooth motion to the animation and that's very nice so number three is a very important topic because anytime you're compositing say titles on top of your video or you're working with graphics and it's just not blending well together because you know your titles are white and the background is very hot it's very bright in the background or whatever in this technique, I want to talk about how to properly composite your titles with your footage. <clears throat> so there's going to be times where you're going to work with titles or graphics over bright parts of an image. Perhaps, you know, the entire image is bright and we want to be able to properly composite a graphic on top of video. You see right here, you can barely see our title on top of this clip, but there's a couple of techniques that we can apply to make this work. So one, I can double click our clip, go to fix controls and bring down the opacity of this shot. And now our title is a lot easier to read and this is a great way to composite graphics and titles on top of your clips and also another thing we can do is go to effects go to blur and sharpen and we can do a camera blur to our video clip blur this out just by a little bit and we can even raise the opacity back up and now this is a very easy way for us to read our title and before we move on to our fourth technique i want to talk a little bit about envato elements you know what i dislike as a content producer having to spend hundreds of dollars a month to purchase stock footage music for my videos, After Effects templates, and graphic design templates for my business. With Envato Elements, I can save a ton of money for my business by spending only $16.50 a month where I can download unlimited music, After Effects templates, stock footage, and so much more for my business needs. If you want to learn how you can save countless time and money, be sure to check our links in the video description, which will take you over to Envato Elements. And so for our fourth technique, we're going to talk about creating smooth motion, which is great for photos or even drawing a little bit more attention to your video. All right, so we're going to talk about creating very smooth motion. And as before, we're going to go into our store folder and grab the transform effect. And we'll bring this right over to our source window. 
and now we want to be able just to add a little bit more interest to the shot because currently the shot is just static and we can make it a little bit more interesting so what we'll do is we'll add a keyframe for position and scale and we'll come here to the end and we will simply just scale into the shot just by a little bit we don't want to go crazy and we can position it on a very specific point maybe for this clip it would actually make sense goes to the ferris wheel but we'll move this over a little bit more just to emphasize this and then we can uncheck use composition shutter angle and set this to 180. And now we've created our own custom motion on the shot and it's very interesting and it's not over the top to the point where you can notice it's a digital zoom but more of a just a very nice push in. And you can also do a push out if you want. For our fifth and final technique which is what I think is probably one of the most important techniques for any video editor that has to deal with the color and that's specifically understanding just a little bit about the scopes and a little bit about color correction so in this fifth technique I'm going to give you a little bit of a quick overview on how to work with scopes so now when it comes to reading the brightness and contrast of your shot we're going to add lumetri color because this is the main color correction effect in Premiere and then we'll go to the color tab here at the top and we'll have a little bit of scopes here so when color correcting and come here to the basic correction and most people what they're going to do in, this, in a flat scenario is increase the contrast of a shot and then maybe we'll bring up the exposure by a touch when you go to the color tab you'll see that there's lumetri scopes here on the left or somewhere around your project and what our goal here is to keep all the data between 100 and 0 we don't want the data to go above the line and you see we have some data probably going a little bit over the line here and these these are these lights being blown out in the background and we have some room to push down the blacks a little bit more and also we can come here and we can change the waveform type to say just luma and we can see that data a little bit more and you can see what's being pushed so what we can do here to kind of just continue to push out the contrast of the shot is we can just monitor our line we just want to keep this touching zero we don't want to go below it and i can come here and just bring down our blacks and we see some of this data is being crushed if we go too far so we only want to adjust the blacks enough to where we're not getting that data crushed by much and then we control the highlights by a little bit and just by keeping this well contained we have a pretty safe balanced shot now sometimes you'll get shots that are just blown out completely and you can definitely tell by looking at this data that it, the image is way too hot and especially the skin so skin specifically should lie around 70 here on the skin tone or not really above it and you can tell what's exposed by looking at the waveform based on how the image is laid out so this data right here in the like middle is our person that we're interviewing so essentially the waveform monitor is laid out exactly how the image is laid out as well and this is essentially just a small overview on how to use the waveform monitor to make sure that your footage is not being overexposed or crushed too much so you have an accurate way of measuring your shot so you can start doing a little bit more professional color grading so those are my five video editing techniques that I think every video editor should know of course there's a ton of techniques out there and so much for us to learn but this is maybe one of a few videos that we'll be creating on Adobe Premiere and these techniques so if you're new to our channel be sure to subscribe because we post post-production tutorials every single week multiple times a week you can also hit me up on my social media networks those links are in the video description and always be creating.